Hello third graders, welcome back. This is Dr. Davis here ready for another lesson about the human body. Let's review. The ear is divided into three sections, outer, middle, and inner. The outer ear is made of cartilage, remember this top part around here, and the outer ear is a sound catcher and it collects sound waves from the air around you and funnels them through the ear canal to the eardrum. And we also talked about the many steps that have to occur in order for you to hear sounds. Earwax prevents infections by keeping dirt and other particles from building up in the ear canal. So earwax is necessary to keep our bodies safe and well. Also, we learned that the middle ear has the three smallest bones in your body. And what are they called? The hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. Bonus question, does anyone remember which of those three is the smallest? In fact, it's about the size of a grain of rice. It is the stirrup. Your inner ear is located inside your skull, so we can only see the outer ear, then we have the middle ear, and the inner ear is actually inside the skull. The inner ear helps with hearing and controls our balance. Did you know that? We learned about that the last time, so the inner ear is not just for hearing, it serves another important role. Signals are carried on nerve fibers or threads along the auditory nerve to the hearing center of the brain. So that auditory nerve is very, very important in order for you to be able to get the signal to the brain. Now, friends, lesson nine. Can you believe it? We're almost finished with this domain. So today, this is what I want you listening for. Listen carefully as we review information about the different human body systems. You've learned a lot this domain. Today is our last day together. Dr. Wellbody is here to help us review some of what you learned about the human body. Take it away, Dr. Wellbody. Hello, everyone. It's so nice to see you again. When Ricardo and I talked last night, I said that I hope that you had learned how to take care of your body so that your pediatricians could give you a clean bill of health. Does anyone know what I mean by a clean bill of health? It's just another way of saying that you're healthy. If someone examines you and finds nothing wrong, they will give you a clean bill of health. It is important to know how to keep your bodies healthy, so I will talk to you about that too. Humans are mammals. What do you know about mammals? I know that you know a lot about mammals. All mammals are warm-blooded animals that grow body hair, produce milk for their young, and have brains and backbones. You have brains and backbones, so you are also vertebrates. All mammals are vertebrates, but are all mammals alike? Cats and dogs, foxes and sheep, whales and seals? What makes you different from all of them? That's a question I'd like for you to think about as we review what you know about humans. Humans have cells, tiny microscopic units that are the building blocks of their bodies. Similar cells group together to form tissues. Tissues form organs, and organs build systems. Remember that nerve cells become nerve tissue, that's right, which is what the organs of the nervous system are made of, whereas muscle cells become muscle tissue, which is what muscles are made of. All of the systems working together form a complicated, interconnected network. Do other mammals have cells, tissues, organs, and systems? Yes. Cells are the basic building blocks of all living things, including all other mammals and plants, too. You've seen this slide several times now since we've been talking about the human body. Humans have many interconnected systems, including the circulatory system, the digestive system, the excretory system, the respiratory system, and the three that we talked about the most, the skeletal system, the muscular system, and what's the last one? The nervous system, good. 
Do all mammals have circulatory systems? Yes. Blood travels through mammals' bodies. Do they have digestive systems? Why, yes, they eat and break down their food. Do they have excretory systems? Yes, they sweat and urinate. Do they have respiratory systems? Yes, mammals breathe in air. Do mammals have skeletal systems? I know you know the answer to that question. Yes, they have backbones. Do they have muscular systems? Yes, they do. Mammals run and jump or glide and swim, moving those bones, so they must have muscles. Do they have nervous systems? Yes, they react to their environments, so they must have nerves. Let's take a closer look at the skeletal system. Your skeletal system is made up of axial bones, and what's that other kind of bones? Appendicular bones, working together to give your body a sturdy framework for all the other systems. Your vertebrae are stacked in a column, forming your spine. Together with your protective skull and rib cage, they are your axial bones, running down the center or axis of your body. Your legs and arms are attached to your appendicular bones, the shoulder blades, and the pelvis. Can anyone remember what we call the point where two bones meet? Yes, it's called a joint. Some joints move, others don't, and some move just a little bit. And what's the name of the connective tissues that wrap around your joints to hold your bones together? Yes, they are ligaments. What can you do to give your skeletal system a clean bill of health? Well, first of all, diet is important. And when we say diet, we're not talking about you're going on a diet and you're not eating certain things. This is talking about the kinds of things that you really need to eat. Make sure that you eat enough foods with calcium to grow strong bones. Milk, broccoli, and dark leafy greens are good choices. Posture is important too. Make sure that you sit and stand up straight. Not like this, but like this. Keep your back safe by bending your knees when you lift something heavy. Now, the muscular system. Rope-like tissues called tendons attach your bones to muscles. These skeletal muscles give your bones mobility, allowing you to touch your toes, or climb a mountain. Because we control our skeletal muscles, we call them voluntary muscles. There are other muscles that we cannot consciously control. What do we call them? Right, involuntary muscles. Smooth muscles are involuntary muscles. They contract and lengthen on their own, working day and night to complete their jobs. Who can give an example of a smooth muscle? Yes, we talked about one of the main smooth muscles are those in your stomach because your stomach is always churning, always moving. And remember, we don't want to have to tell our stomach when to work. It automatically knows what to do. That's what makes it an involuntary muscle. A third type of muscle is also involuntary. This is your body's most important type of muscle. It is the muscle that keeps you alive. Does anyone remember the name of the strong muscle that is found only in the heart? You may have been thinking that the answer to this question was the heart, that is the organ, but there's a type of muscle. Yes, it is called the cardiac muscle. It is important to keep all of your muscles, both voluntary and involuntary, healthy. What can you do to give your muscles a clean bill of health? Well, diet, once again, is important. Muscles need protein found in eggs, meat, beans, and nuts. Exercise strengthens your muscles. Get all the exercise you can as a way of thanking your muscles for keeping you in constant motion. And now, who knows what we're going to talk about? The nervous system, that's right. Your nervous system is your body's command system, communicating with the rest of the body systems. 
telling them exactly what to do. It works closely with your skeletal and your muscular systems. Your skeletal muscles move your skeleton bones, but your muscles get their commands from messages sent by the nervous system. A network of nerves links your brain and spinal cord to muscles and sensory organs all over your body. Nerves collect messages from your brain, from your senses, and from other places inside your body. Many messages can be sent at the same time, as electrical impulses dash around your body in split-second relays. Your nervous system, with your brain acting as its main commander, controls everything you do. Your nervous system is like an electrical system. Electrical wiring, whether in your house or in your body, can be shorted out if something goes wrong. So how can you prevent that? How can you give your nervous system a clean bill of health? It's no surprise that diet and exercise are just as important to your nervous system as they are to other systems. Vitamins and minerals from healthy foods like fruits and vegetables and protein from different foods are all important. Drinking lots of water helps too. Stay away from eating extra salty foods and from anything that is filled with too much sugar such as soda. Apples and oranges are great substitute. Be sure to get outside every day to play and be sure to get plenty of sleep. Your bodies are working very hard as they grow and they need plenty of nourishment or food and rest to grow on. All we have left to review are your sensory organs which include parts of your eyes and your ears. Without these sensory organs, you could not hear me reading aloud and you would not be able to see the images that I'm showing you. In order to see, you need light. Your eye sees objects by seeing the light that bounces off those objects. Light passes through the cornea, the outer covering of your eye. Light rays are bent by the cornea before they pass through the pupil, the black dot at the center of your eye, to the lens and onto the retina at the back of your eye. A short optic nerve attached to the eyeball sends impulses to the brain where the image is interpreted and you see it. What can you do to give your eyes a clean bill of health? Your eyes already have some built-in protection. Remember, eyelids, eyebrows, and eyelashes keep dust and sweat away. Tube deep sockets in your skull protect your eyeballs. But there are other things you can do to prevent injury to your eyes. For example, never look directly at the sun. Avoid bright lights and smoky spaces. Give your eyes a rest, never sitting for too long in front of a computer or a television screen. Wear safety goggles to protect your eyes from damaging chemicals in pool water or chemicals in a science lab and wear sunglasses to protect from the glare from sunlight shining off of things such as polished surfaces or snow. Your eyes and ears often work together to make sense of your world. Your ears include the outer ear, those flaps we see on the outside of your head, and the two other sections, remember, the middle ear and the inner ear, both hidden inside your head. Your outer ear catches sound waves from the air and directs them through the ear canal to your eardrum. The eardrum vibrates and begins to move the bones of the middle ear. The hammer, anvil, and stirrup set off vibrations in the inner ear, causing the tiny hairs of the cochlea, a snail-shaped bony tube, to move. These hair cells produce nerve impulses, sending them along your auditory nerve to your brain. Your brain sorts out everything and you miraculously hear sound. Your ears are delicate organs as well. So how can you give them a clean bill of health? Well, most important, keep the noise volume down, not too loud. Ears can be damaged when sounds are too loud. Although it is important to keep your ears clean, you must never stick anything in them. Objects might get stuck or otherwise cause damage to the eardrum. Well, that brings us to the end of our time together. We've had lots of fun and I hope that you have too. 
We hope you've learned a few things along the way. Here is one last riddle before we leave. I am probably the most important three pounds in your body. I help you think and reason. I control your movements as well as all of your senses. I am the one organ that makes humans more advanced than other mammals. What am I? Hmm, get an answer in your head. I am the brain, the brain. Remember to eat a balanced diet and exercise every day. Dr. Wellbody and I wish you a clean bill of health at your next checkup. Bye for now. And now friends, it's time for a brain break. Now, I want everyone to stand up and we are going to play a little game of Simon Says. Now, yes, I cannot see you. And this is a different kind of Simon Says, okay? So Simon is going to tell you to do certain things about your body. So here we go. Get ready. Simon says, point to your skull. Yes. Simon says, point to your ball and socket joint. What can you, yes, ball and socket joint. So you could point to your shoulder or what could else, what else could you point to? Yes, your hip, your pelvis. Simon says, point to your spinal cord. Simon says, point to your rib cage. Yes, some of you might be pointing down here. Some of you may be pointing up here. Okay, hard one. Simon says, point to your femur. This is the largest bone in your body. Yes, your thigh. Simon says, point to the smallest bone in your body. Hmm, where is it? Yes, it's in your inner ear. So some of you may be pointing here, or some of you may be pointing back here. What is it called? Yes, the stirrup. Simon says point to a hinge joint. Hinge joint, yes, your fingers are hinge joints. What else are hinge joints? Yes, your arms, your knee, your foot, your wrist, great job. Simon says point to your brain, point to your brain. And now Simon says, have a seat and let's get back to work. Now, let's see what you remember from the lesson that we reviewed today. Question number one, explain why cells are called the building blocks of life. I want you to think about that. And then question number two, describe the different types of cells and what they form. So first of all, question one, why are cells called the building blocks of life? Get that answer in your head. Cells are tiny structures that group together to form larger structures, such as tissues and organs. Remember, all living organisms begin with cells. And those cells divide and multiply and divide and multiply until tissues are made and then organs are made and systems are made. Now, our second question, describe the different types of cells and what they form. So, we talked about cells such as nerve cells. So what do nerve cells form? Nerve tissue. And then the nerve tissue makes up organs in the nervous systems. And the same thing happens with muscle cells. Muscle cells form muscle tissue, which makes up the muscles. Good job. Question three. What are some things that you can do to give your body a clean bill of health? Dr. Wellbody talked about things that we could do to make ourselves healthy. So what is something that we can do to get that clean bill of health? And question four, what are some ways to give your delicate eyes and ears a clean bill of health? So this question is about your body overall, and this question is referring to specifically your eyes and your ears. So we can eat a healthy, balanced diet and find time to exercise every day. Those are two things that we can do for a clean bill of health. There are some other things, so we just listed two of them. Now, what can we do for our eyes and ears? Your eyes, wearing sunglasses, protective goggles, 
especially sometimes when people are out doing yard work those goggles protect from things flying into their eyes. Or sometimes when you're in the pool or the ocean, that helps to protect your eyes. Resting your eyes from computer and TV screens. Sitting in front of a screen too long is not good for your eyes. There are some other things that you might say, like not looking directly into the sun. That was another one. You may think of some other things as well. And for our ears, not listening to music that is too loud, not sticking anything in your ear, and also keeping them clean. Our word work for today, miraculously. In the read aloud, you heard that when sound enters your ear, your brain sorts everything out and you miraculously hear sound. Can you say that word with me, miraculously? Good job. When something happens miraculously, it is so amazing and it's as if it's happening by a miracle or is in fact a miracle. Example, isn't it amazing that the sun miraculously rises every morning? What are some things that you can think of that you feel are miraculous or it happens miraculously? I think it is miraculous when I'm at the beach and I see the oceans continuing to come in and then twice in 24 hours we have a high tide and then low tide. And the high tide, those waves roll in and they come up really, really far. The water comes up really far. I think that's miraculous. I also think it's miraculous when astronauts go to outer space and they send us pictures and images of what the Earth looks like and other planets, the moon. All of that is miraculous to me. I want you to take some time and think about something that happens miraculously and share that with someone where you are. So today, friends, we have concluded all nine lessons of the domain, the human body, systems and senses. I will see you next time. Take care.